New technology has arrived in the triad to help couples dealing with infertility. Our Veronica White stepped inside the lab to see how it works. The latest technology in in vitro fertilization comes to the triad. The embryo scope is the only one between Atlanta and Norfolk, Virginia. The embryo scope is a time lapse imaging system built into an incubator. It was developed in Europe and recently arrived in the United States, including at Carolina's Fertility Institute. The first advantage is that a camera moves over the incubated embryos every 20 minutes and takes their pictures. For five to six days, they won't be disturbed. The environment mimics the natural womb. The second advantage is that by looking at the images, they can see which embryos would likely result in a pregnancy, upping the chances of success tremendously. New mom Jenny Biagotti says she has her nine month old twins thanks to IVF at Carolina's Fertility Institute. For her next pregnancy, she is excited to use the embryoscope. This is really, uh, I think, a, a first realization of a dream that most embryologists have had for decades. I think it's amazing what they can do nowadays, you know, for people that can't get pregnant on their own. And I know some people, you know, maybe don't agree with it, but for, for us it was just wonderful. Hey! And Getting these boys is just amazing. They're our blessing. The doctors say the ultimate goal is to make this more accessible and affordable to all groups of people. In Winston-Salem, Veronica White, WXII 12 News. You know, lots and lots of people dream of starting a family one day, but sometimes the process can be difficult. Infertility complications affect both men and women. But Dr. Tamer Yalsinkaya is here to tell us that with the right fertility plan, you may be able to overcome your problems of infertility. He's a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist with Carolina's Fertility Institute and a member of the Cone Health staff. Good morning. Good morning. Infertility, sometimes it seems like the longer a couple waits to have a child, sometimes they have more problems. Is that, would that be a, a correct assumption? Yes, infertility is a disease of the reproductive system and uh, it's defined as trying to conceive without any protection for uh, 12 months. And this has been decreased uh, to six months of trying for women over 35 because of uh, reproductive aging concerns in that group of women. And it is recommended that uh, couples seek help after uh, definitely one year of trying um, from a specialist or uh, their uh, gynecologist. So if, if a woman has tried, a couple has tried for, you know, six months or a year, no results, what's the next step? So uh, we know that infertility is a result of uh, problems in women in third of the, 30% of the time and problems in men 30% of the time. And the remaining uh, 40% uh, either both partners have issues or infertility is unexplained. So we first check and make sure um, ovulation is occurring, mm -hmm. uh, that the uh, female is ovulating, and we check that there is sperm production, and also check uh, whether the sperm can uh, reach the egg uh, by checking the fallopian tubes uh, of the woman. Awesome. And, and then once you figure out the problem, there are a number of ways to try and fix that, right? Right. Most of the time, we end up uh, treating uh, the uh, woman with hormones uh, mm -hmm. to make them ovulate better. And uh, if there's a blockage or hormone issue in the male partner, uh, he's treated by a urologist. And we do uh, intrauterine inseminations in some of those mm -hmm. cases and sometimes treat endometriosis or uh, try to open up uh, blocked fallopian tubes. And if all those fail, in vitro fertilization uh, is a wonderful way to uh, address the rest of the problems in the remaining couples. We have talked a lot about a number of different options that, that there are this morning, but you have a chance to learn more. There are several classes that are coming up from Code Health. The first is preparing for nine special months. It's on November 19th from 6.30 to 8.30 at Code Health Women's Hospital Education Center. You can register online at conehealth.com slash classes. Another, the road to having a baby when it's long. That one's on Monday the 16th from 6 to 7 p.m. Also at Women's Hospital Education Center. You can log on to register for that as well. 
And then this last one, Coping with Infertility. It's a group that meets every other Wednesday from January 13th through March 23rd. It's 6.30 to 8 o'clock at Cone House Women's Center there in the doctor's dining room. So lots of information that the doctor gave you today and lots of ways you can get more information. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. It's just a special bond when your child has a child. And which yeah. makes the afternoon at One Burlington House extra special today. That's right, because this grandmother got the best birthday gift ever, and we were lucky enough to be there. She's been waiting for some good news for a really long time, and this just happens to be her birthday, too. So this is quite a gift to be able to give her. <laughs> On her birthday, this Burlington mom gets to see her beloved daughter and son-in-law. But that's really just the icing on the cake. It's another girl. <laughs> you already know? This is the real gift for the entire family. What a birthday present. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Watched it quite often. Pretty magical. Those 15 seconds comes after years of heartache, the kind most of us probably can't even fathom. I could watch that all day. <laughs> Julie and Chris fell in love, got married, began trying for a baby. We've had the miscarriages. We've had infertility. We've lost a child. After several miscarriages and then a long bout with infertility, they got pregnant and had a baby, a darling daughter, Millie. She looked absolutely perfect. The doctors were coming from different departments in the hospital just to look at her. She was so pretty when she was born. Millie was born with a heart problem and died when she was 11 days old in June of last year. It's been a lot of heartbreak, but we have really found comfort in each other and learned to depend on each other. Because of complications during the pregnancy, Julie was told she'd never have children again. We were told by several doctors that we probably wouldn't be able to have children again. We were told that a hysterectomy was probably in the future. We were able to help them through in vitro fertilization and implant the embryo on the healthy side of her uterus so that now she's able to have another baby girl. So this black and white magical 15 seconds or so and its sweet, sweet sounds is the best gift ever, birthday or no, because it's all about hope and not giving up. At first, terrifying. It still is kind of a very mixed emotions. Yeah. A lot of joy, but we're pretty nervous too. Always get a second opinion. Don't let one doctor tell you that this is never going to happen for you because it's people like Dr. Yeltsin Kai are, are out there that will fight for you and will help give you every opportunity. Oh, so happy they didn't get discouraged by that news. I know, and yeah. they're just so brave for, for putting themselves out there and just and I just I just loved it. Um, we, we were so lucky to be there. That's we really were. The Turner said that they felt um, isolated in a way because infertility isn't often talked about among young couples. But researchers say infertility actually impacts 10 to 15 percent of couples. The national success rate for in vitro fertilization is around 40 percent. But the local clinic that treated them, they say their success rate is double that. Coming up, a routine fumigation for turn.
the United Kingdom, a place with an important position in the history of IVF, the birthplace of the technology, the first ever test tube baby, Louise Brown, born in 1978. Dr. Simon Fischel was on the research team. We've now moved on in IVF for well over three decades, and we understand more and more the risks, or in fact, more importantly, the lack of risks that now occur in IVF technology. But when I was first involved in this, right at the very beginning, actually, even some of the most eminent scientists in the world were saying that this technology was too risky. It shouldn't be allowed. But they didn't really understand it. At the time, IVF was controversial, seen as playing God. There was this, this whole ethical dilemma. There were the religious groups and there were other people who believed that actually IVF was immoral. So there wasn't a day that went by that we weren't criticized or pilloried for the work we were doing. But we believed in it and we fought on and I think we've been vindicated over the years. 35 years later, there are more IVF babies being born than ever before. In the United States, 1.5% of all births are conceived using artificial reproductive technologies. That's the highest percentage ever. I believe somewhere around 95% of all the problems of infertility using all the technologies available, we can now overcome. And IVF is a, an, an amazing technology because it allows us to define families that we couldn't do before in the way we were able to bring about a complex process but in a mix of families that actually come to us to help achieve in vitro fertilization. At Care Fertility Group in the UK, a machine called the Embryoscope is raising the success rate of IVF births even more. Traditionally in IVF, the embryos are removed from the safety of the incubator once a day and analyzed under a microscope. But embryos are fragile and removing them from the incubator exposes them to risks like changes in temperature, or any toxins in the air. With the embryoscope, a tiny camera inside the incubator takes a photo every 10 minutes, creating a time-lapse video of the embryo's development and removing the need to expose it, also giving embryologists more information than they've ever had before. So on the screen now, we have one patient's eggs. Um, each slide has 12 slots, so this patient has filled a slide with her 12 eggs. The eggs were inseminated with a sperm, and if we start the video, we'll be able to see which ones fertilize and which ones don't. You can see there the two nuclei, that's the sign of fertilization, one's from the egg and one's from the sperm. And as the video progresses, the fertilized embryo will now cleave and divide into two cells, and then continue. And the clock in the counter in the corner here is telling us how many hours have progressed and how much time has progressed since the sperm was added to the egg, and that's the critical time point. All of those images compiled together to, see, to show us a video is giving us dramatically more information than we've ever had before. And very occasionally we see cells go backwards, cells merge, so what has been a four-cell embryo later is a three-cell embryo, and that's not good news. So we can say, well, let's avoid that one for transfer, so let's focus on the rest of the embryos. So that's really why we're gathering so much data and experience. But using this, this whole process, it, it, it really changes the way the embryologists work in the lab. And I think it is changing the face of how we do IVF, in fact. We, we love this technology. We feel now we've got a tool that's easy to use. It's based on our own data. So we believe it, we trust it, um, and it's giving our patients the very best chance that they may not have had in the past. I'll do this fat one. <gasps> one such case was the Potter family. Told it would be impossible for them to conceive on their own, IVF was their only option. As an extreme case, they were referred to CARE in 2011, just in time for the first testing of the embryoscope. This was the first opportunity we'd had once we'd developed this particular technology of trying to apply it to a case. And we used this case uh, where there were several embryos and a um, some difficult decisions to make because up until this time the embryologists had their own intuitive choice of embryos from their own experience 
Now all of a sudden you're trying to hand it over to technology. Allow the technology to choose for me what I would normally think would be a better embryo. And this was a, a really revealing moment for us when we allowed the technology to choose the embryo for the embryologist to do the transfer. And of course this is what happened in, in the Potter's case. We had a day three transfer. So they were in the lab in the embryo scope for three days and then I went back in and they put them back in my womb and then I had to wait for two weeks, the two week wait, the dreaded two week wait, crawling the walls for two weeks. You're moving forward all the time, that's, once, yeah. you, once you're gaining the momentum you concentrate on the end game and you don't tend to focus on anything outside of that, it's just, okay, what's the next bit, what's the next bit and your positivity kind of, or mine did anyway, your positivity spiralled. Um, Failure wasn't an option, yeah. or as, as far as my head was concerned, it was going to work. It did work. Gemma and Simon got the phone call saying they were pregnant. I remember just smiling. I remember describing um, on our wedding day that I had a really sore face because I'd been smiling all day and it was just more of that. Yeah. Spin it. Round and round and round. On March 25, 2012, Isabella Potter was the first baby born with the benefit of the embryoscope at CARE. The first, but certainly not the last. Since Bella, there have been more than a thousand pregnancies using the embryoscope at CARE clinics across the UK and Ireland. According to CARE, the embryoscope has raised the percentage of live births by more than 50 percent in the United Kingdom. To me, a result is when a couple walk into a clinic, what is their chance of a live birth. It ranges from 10% to 50%, depending on the condition and the expertise of the clinic. What we're able to do is to elevate that chance of a live birth by maybe 15 or 20 percentage points. Much of IVF is about trying to beat the odds, and as technology progresses, so do the chances for families around the world.